So we have a question from a viewer who wants to build a high-end workstation, yep. Ryzen 9 5950X for $800 for the 16 core Zen 3 chip, or the previous generation Threadripper, since as of the recording of this, the new Zen 3 Threadrippers are not even announced, much less available. And given availability of CPUs in general, I think it might be a while. And this is a good question because it's not, this is, I don't expect this to be as popular as some of the other topics we cover, but people who need this sort of setup don't get it covered very often from YouTubers and tech review guides and websites, which mostly focus on how well Fortnite plays, which, you know, the kind of person building this machine really doesn't care about. From a value perspective, the new Zen 3 chips are great, and with the 8-core CCX Complex, the Ryzen 9 5950X is a very compelling CPU. Amazing core-to-core -core latency because it's only two 8-core CCXs with a single Infinity Fabric, a good improvement over the four 4-core four CCXs with a very complex Infinity Fabric arrangement on it, the previous 3950X. It did. Higher clock speeds running not quite to five gigahertz, but pretty close. close. So it's got a higher clock speed, it does. a higher IPC, and lower core-to-core -core latency than any of the new Zen 2 Threadrippers that are currently available. Correct. And a much lower price. Threadripper used to be $1,000. It did. But it's not anymore. The cheapest Threadripper is the 24-core chip, which is the, uh, the TR3960X 24-core chip for $1,400. $1,300 if you can find a deal on it. But at the beginning of 2021, if you need Threadripper, I would be inclined to say, go ahead and skip that with all the other money you're going to spend and get the 32-core Threadripper. It completes out the chip. Nothing's disabled on it. And you get yourself a ridiculously monster, hundreds of megabytes of cache and 32 cores and 64 threads on the TR-37. 3097. 3097. Oh my goodness. The Threadripper names got hard to say when they kind of went to weird numbers there. But man, you're going to pay a lot for it. Picture this. Picture $300 for a premium AM4 board. You will. An X570 Tai Chi. Yep. A Seuss Rog Strix. Uh, Oris Master. Mm -hmm. You're going to spend about $300 on a premium AM4 board. $800 for the 5950X plus $300 for that is $1,100. Yes. We're going to put RAM and storage aside because we're going to assume you're going to buy good RAM and storage no matter what. Correct. You know, 64 or 128 gigs of RAM is what you're putting well, on such a if, machine. If you're on a workstation, you're going to need it. Yeah. <clears throat> Threadripper is $2,000 for the chip and $500 for a TRX40 motherboard worth buying. $2,500. 1100 versus 2500 you can almost build two Ryzen 9s. Now, case, power supply, storage, Everything. RAM, graphics card. Obviously, it's not quite two Ryzen 9s because the whole shebang. Correct. But you, that is $1,400 more to double your cores to 32. Yes. But clock speed is slower, IPC is slower, and quarter core latency is higher. Do you... Is the application you're running really in need of that many cores? Look, I love lots of cores, but not everything scales to N cores. Correct. Some things only scale to 12 or 16, maybe 24, but there's a drop-off unless you're doing multiple VMs, software development, scientific computing, etc. Adobe Premiere Pro does not effectively make great use of 32 cores. It does 16 okay. It used to not even do that. A couple of years ago, eight was about the most it ran, but they've, they've been improving it over time. So if you're a video editor, you may find 32 cores is a waste of your money, unless you're multitasking. But you said it before we started, what is the one single biggest reason to go Threadripper over Ryzen 9? Price. It costs more. Lanes. Oh, hang on. To go, oh, the lanes. The yes. lanes. Yes, the lanes. <laughs> After that long Hang speech, on. she's like, what is he referring to? What Hang on, let me get the here? script out here. <laughs> we don't have a script. Yeah. The lanes. The PCI Express lanes. Correct. So you've got 64 PCI Express lanes on Threadripper versus 20 CPU lanes plus the chipset lanes on AMD. On Threadripper, if you want to put 7, 8... NVMe drives, you, you can. can. 
And you know what else is amazing about them? They all have great performance. Yeah, because they'll all work. And they're all, the CPU just chugs right along. Or maybe you want to put in multiple graphics cards. You can put four graphics cards into a Threadripper system, 16.8, 16.8, if you need compute. Not for gaming, but for compute. Well, scientific research. And if that's the case, then the $1,400 price increase to go from Ryzen 9 5950X to uh, TR 3970X probably is trivial. Because by the time you add that much NVMe or that many graphics cards, especially if they're premium professional cards, by the time you put in 128 or 256 gigs of RAM, by the time you've got three 4K or even 5K monitors, yep. by the time you've got the case and the power supply and the graphics cards and everything else, and especially if you're paying somebody to use the computer, well, yeah. what difference does the $1,400? I mean, obviously you don't want to waste money. Here's a perfect example. We have a thread ripper. We do. We did the build here on the channel. We did. We have a video editor upstairs as we're recording this right now who is editing videos. 128 gigs of RAM, multiple terabytes of NVMe. It is the 24 core chip because I got it a while ago before the Zen 3s came out. He could absolutely do his job on a Ryzen 9 just fine. But we pay him to edit videos. Correct. If he gains even five or 10% efficiency, multiple open programs, After Effects, Photoshop, Premiere, Rendering. Media Encoder, web browsers to pull stuff up. He has three 4K monitors on his desk. He does. The extra cost to put Threadripper there, if he gets more work done. Makes sense. It pays for itself. Mm -hmm. It does. And it's just nicer to get stuff done. You don't have to, there's nothing worse than being short of memory, short of compute, short of storage, short of everything. You're sitting there being creative. You're trying to get something done. You've got Having work to, to do. Wait for your computer. I don't want to wait for my computer. Your computer works for you. You don't work for it. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? So there is a wide gap between. I want a workstation to dabble and play with this stuff, and I'm making money, money with, with this it. stuff. The I'm making money crowd would be... The Threadripper crowd. Yeah, why is this a conversation? Threadripper is incredible. I have, it's the amount of, of compute and lanes and expansion options for the money is mind-blowing. It's, it's amazing. Interestingly enough... There's a step above Threadripper that some people actually might consider. We're not going to get into detail here, but if you if you hear 32 cores and go, is that going to be enough? We could <laughs> use more. That's not enough. They do have a 64 core Threadripper for four grand. Epic. But then there's Epic, and you know what you get with Epic over Threadripper? 128 Eight. PCI Express lanes. Yes, you do. And terabyte RAM support. Terabyte. And and you get a few other things as well, including uh, multiple socket system support. How much is a motherboard for that? Well, you'd buy those systems. You wouldn't build them. You can build them. And those can get expensive pretty quickly. That'd be like, what, 10, 15, 20 grand? Yeah, you could put together a ten to $20,000 Epic system without trying very hard. However, picture... You have a workload that involves making money. Correct. You're paying some guy $100,000 because he is an expert and he's running it and managing yep. whatever it is that you're doing. Yep. You can maybe for 20-ish thousand, maybe 20, well, like say for $25,000, you could put together a server with 128 cores and 256 threads and one and a half terabytes of RAM one and a half. And a combined total of 256 PCI Express lanes. Wow. If that makes you more money. Then it makes sense. That's way outside the scope <laughs> of the question. Hey, bro, I'm just sitting here with four cores. <laughs> <laughs> but companies don't buy that hardware for kicks. They buy it because buying it means they get to make more money. It's a profit-driven incentive. And I'm, I'm mostly using it as an example to anybody wondering, do I buy Threadripper or do I buy Ryzen 9? To which the question is, will you make more money with this if you change your thought process from 
how much this costs you to how much this makes Thank you, you. Potentially, you buy as much computer as you can possibly afford because it just means you make more money. But that's not true for everybody. And there's a diminishing returns point. It's one of the reasons we have the 24 core Threadripper is because Adobe Premiere doesn't scale to 32. It really doesn't. And it just, there wouldn't have been a lot of benefit for our use case. We'll upgrade to the next thing before the 24 core isn't enough. So it made sense for us. Correct. Hopefully this helps somebody. <laughs>